Okay, so now we've sort of introduced both vectors and tensors. Uh, now what we want to do is talk about how they uh, change under coordinate rotation, so, or rather not change, but how their components change under coordinate rotation. What I'm showing you here is basically this in, in uh, black is the original coordinate system, the 1, 2, 3 coordinate system that we talked about. And then using the red dotted lines, I'm showing you uh, some arbitrary um, rot rotated coordinate system, the primed coordinate system, so defined as one prime, two prime, and three prime directions. Still orthogonal directions, but now the whole the whole system is rotated. So, and then I drew some green vector v, and and our goal here is what I've written down. We want to say if if we already know the vector v, let's say in the primed uh, in the unprimed coordinate system, so the original black coordinate system, and those components are are v sub i. Can we compute the components of v uh, in the prime coordinate system? Uh, that is, we want to solve for v sub i prime. So how do we do this? Well, what we're going to do to start with is we're going to write down the vector in its symbolic form. So v in the unprime system is going to look like v i e i hat, right? And you also would agree that I could write that same vector v in the prime coordinate system as v i prime e i prime, right? There's no, there's no distinction there. So it'd be convenient here to equate them because both of them are the vector v, so I could write v i e i hat is equal to v i prime e i hat prime. There's a problem with this. Um, it violates one of the rules that I, I uh, told you about, which is that a dummy index can only be repeated once. So on this side, I have a dummy index of i, and this side, I have a dummy index of i. So I, that's actually not allowed. So uh, I need to cancel that out and change my dummy index so that I, I follow the appropriate rules. So let's just change the i to the j, v j prime, e j prime. Okay? So that's those are equivalent. So now the question is, what we're trying to solve for is we want to solve for that, for vj prime. Okay? So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, we want to be able to somehow get rid of that uh, ej prime out of there. So how about, remember, when we're solving equations, we just we can do anything we want to the equation as long as we do the same thing to both sides. So in this case, let's go ahead down and we'll write that we're going to dot take the dot product of both sides with um, some new vector e k prime. So let's write that here. So v i e i hat dotted with e k prime equals v j prime e j prime dotted with e k prime. Okay? Well, let's look at this term. We know what that is. It follows from our definition that, that we just talked about in our last module. That is delta j k. That's a Kronecker delta. This term, what is that? Let's go back to our plot here and look. Well, that says the first term, if this is, if this is, uh, so let's say, let's take one to be i and let's say two to be k. This is just simply the dot product between this vector and that vector. So it's just a, ends up being the cosine between those angles because they both have uh, unit uh, magnitudes. So we're gonna actually define this quantity here as r i k. So I can go through and take it'll be it could be I could represent this as a three by three matrix, um, and it turns out this is actually the rotation matrix. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and, and write that out uh, sort of with without uh, all the other junk. Okay, so we know that the Kronecker delta only has a value, and it's a value is one, whenever j is equal to k, and it's zero everywhere else. So this quantity just becomes v sub k. Oops, prime, I forgot the primes on those, okay? So now we have the equation vk prime is equal to vi r i k and that's actually the, that's the solution so that's a that's given in sort of index form if we wanted to write that in direct form we could write that that says v prime is equal to r transpose times v Okay, so that would be, and that, and remember, this is just talking about how the components transform. Okay, so this would be how we'd write it in direct notation. This would be how we would write it in index notation. Okay, uh, a couple things to note. Um, R is a rotation matrix. and it's orthogonal. What does that mean? Well, that implies that R times R transpose is equal to the identity matrix. Okay? Um, so we could also similarly write that as Rij times R J K is equal to Delta I K. Okay. So that's, uh, that's what we mean by that. We're going to make use of that here, uh, shortly. Okay. Now we want to talk about how does a tensor transform? We're going to follow the exact same procedure. So let's say, so now let's consider a tensor, call it sigma. Well, in in the primed coordinate, the unprimed coordinate system rather, I can write that sigma is equal to sigma ij ei hat ej hat. And in the prime, the prime coordinate system, I can write that that's equal to sigma, I'm gonna now not make the same mistake I made before. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I know I don't wanna have the dummy indices what I had, so let's say sigma KL prime, EK prime, EL prime. And I'm gonna equate them. So if I equate them, I end up with something that looks like this. And I want you to be thinking about as we're writing this down, what is it that I should do? What is what am I trying to solve for? Well, I'm trying to solve for this. So that means I need to get rid of these um, these prime, e prime terms on the right hand side. So how am I going to do that? Well, how about I take a dot product again? So I'm going to go ahead and take the dot product with uh, with what? What should I do? Well, let's see. I want to get rid of this side. I know that if I dot it with another uh, prime vector. Uh, that I'll end up with a Kronecker delta. So how about I dot that with uh, EN? Take a dot product with 
e n prime. Okay, so that looks like sigma i j e i hat e j hat dotted with e n prime hat. Is it going to be equal to sigma k l prime e k prime e l prime dotted with e n prime. Okay, and just like we wanted, that quantity becomes delta l n. This quantity, following our previous definition, just looks like r j n. Okay, so if I now I'm going to clean this up a little bit and say that this now becomes sigma i j r j n e i hat is equal to sigma k l prime delta l n times e k prime, which delta ln times sigma kl, remember this this only has a value now when l equals n, so this can actually become n, and we can write this as sigma prime kn times ek prime. Okay, now we just need to do the same thing again. So in this case, let's go ahead and dot both sides by em prime. So let's go ahead, dot by em prime. And now this becomes sigma ij rjn ei dot em prime is equal to sigma kn prime times ek prime dotted with em prime as before this becomes delta km this becomes rim so we can clean this up and write that sigma ij r j n r i m is equal to sigma m n prime so we've now solved for all the components in the prime coordinate system given the rotation that is defined by these r matrices and the original components of the stress uh, in the unprime coordinate system okay Hopefully that was straightforward. Okay, we also, if we wanted to, could write this in direct notation and say that uh, this winds up looking like R transpose times sigma times R. Okay, so hopefully that was pretty straightforward and gave you a little bit of a preview too of how to how to use some of the terms at least the chronic or delta uh, that we've defined before and a little bit about uh, tensor algebra moving forward so let's go ahead and I'll, I'll write these here quickly as uh, this is in index notation and this is in direct 